so just as promised, I said I was going to show you guys how to put the extended studs into my Integra. So it'll pretty much be the same from every um, Civic from 92, or Civic Integra uh, from 92 up until like 2001 or so. Um, pretty much it's a four lug, it should work. Uh, so without said, yeah, here we go. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and take out the caliper, which I like doing here. All right, uh, release the... Always looking for a little 10 millimeter. Loosen up here. I got braided lines on this because, as I mentioned before, braided lines are amazing. And um, I feel like everybody should get them. <laughs> it's a great peace of mind. It's a Willwood kit. So it's a Willwood four piston. It uses a stock rotor size. And you can pretty much use whatever. Uh, pack compounds that they have, which is amazing because you can get all those pack compounds from some racing, jags, wherever, you know, you pretty much have them all within a day. So if you're at the track like I am quite a bit and you go through pads, you can totally find, you know, pads really quickly and easily. So what I like to do is move the caliper out of the way here. That out of the way. All right. So I'm gonna loosen up these uh, screws here. And that one came out pretty easy. So, in case of these being stuck, as most of you guys, this stuff will be, um, I actually probably could force that out of there if I tried a little bit harder. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your, uh, it's called an impact screwdriver. You probably won't have one as crazy as this. This is a snap or this is a Mac tool ones. I don't want to say snap on from previous life when I used to be a technician <laughs> in a dealership and do stuff. So uh, got some pretty crazy impact screwdriver. Has a Phillips bit on there. Basically, it inserts in there. Uh, I don't know. I have a super long one. I could go get that one, but um, so when you hold it in there, you're gonna pound it and it's gonna kind of kind of preload it with a little bit of pressure. that and then just like that so that doesn't work and say that screw rounds out or twist out um, you can actually buy new screws on uh, eBay or wherever else you want to go online to buy them or you can buy them from a dealership also but they are definitely cheaper on eBay so um, see a little bit of NICs on there um, stuff nice and smooth here Hub looks in pretty decent condition. These are the Chinese hubs or Taiwanese hubs, or these are not OEM hubs. I hate to sound, you know, regional when I say stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna grab right up off the camera. Nice. Impact here. This should not be too tight. Just like that. Nice and smooth. Now that's out. Take out your, uh, so then you're gonna take off uh, your upper ball joint, um, your tie right in here, and take off your lower ball joint, and uh, the hub should be able to be nice and smooth to come out. The important part is when you're sliding this in there, you're sliding the, it's called a pickle fork, I want to say, maybe, I don't I think so. Um, when you slide it in between there, you want to put that in between the boot and the uh, actual solid part of the control arm, not like piercing the boot, so you're basically just pushing the boot up, and 
Like so, so well, there will be some grease that comes out, but as long as you don't puncture the boot, that's the important part. Do not puncture the boot. <laughs> All right. So, just like that. These bearings in here are actually uh, still good and everything. You see, you don't puncture the boot. You just kind of squeeze it down and grease comes out. So that's fine. Um, these are still good. It's going to pain me to take them apart, but <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do for you guys and uh, to install these studs because you see, you wouldn't be able to get that stud out of there if you tried to do it that way. So. Here we go. All right, so I realize a lot of you guys don't have uh, specialty tools and whatnot and maybe even a workspace because, you know, Honda boys, we'd be broke, right? So I figured um, a good easy way to do this if you don't have like a good workspace or a shelf or a vise or something to kind of hold the, the hub in and, you know, tap it out when you can is uh, everyone typically has four jack stands. Everyone always has like some wood laying around around the house from something. You know, so just fashion your jack stands like so. And uh, you got that, and then you put your hub in there. So then you, on that side, like so. And like so. My. Right, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a socket. Doesn't have to be a 30 millimeter, but this one's a 30 millimeter socket that I've literally haven't used for pretty much anything. It's just a, it's a bead on socket for me. So you slide that right down into between where the hub and the actual bearing starts. Just like so. You grab a hammer and then you uh, tap it on out of there. You can also use an air hammer. You can use a lot of other things and whatever else. But you should always use safety glasses and gloves and being safe. Yeah. So what you do with that, go ahead and tap. And it won't be too hard. You'll start to feel it move after a couple, uh, couple of rapid dad tap taps. Obviously, the long, you know, good pieces of wood is in there. You know, I bought these from um, Menards or Home Depot for like fifty-five cents. So why not? And these are Harbor Freight jack stands. So <clears throat> there's always a way. If there's a will. There's a way, right? So ta-da! That's how you ruin a perfectly good wheel bearing. Alright, so when you take that out of there, you're gonna have that apart. Looks pretty good, pretty decent. Well, that's actually kind of in there. Well, that's for me tapping it, never mind. Um, so these are uh, pretty decent bearings. You can see the grease in there is still pretty good, pretty clean. Um, you're gonna remove the, you're gonna grab the snap ring pliers, remove that um, snap ring. You're gonna get that out of there, and I'll show you how to set up all the rest of that stuff after that and how to drive the bearing out of there. So you're gonna need a kind of a special tool to do that, but for the most part, it should be okay. Yep. Ugh. Also, you're gonna have your said hub just like this, so what I'm gonna do right now is actually pound the studs out of this, and then there's a little um, race on there. So what you do is you kinda, however you can figure out how to get that off of there, if you could take a flathead screwdriver, and pound it in there to get it off. I have an air impact hammer, so I'm gonna take that and go brap, rip it down a little bit, and then I'm gonna take my uh, my cutoff wheel and cut a little slice in it, and it should just slide right on off. Yeah. All right, so once you got the snap ring out, I had it kind of pre-set up there, but you got your snap ring out, it'll look pretty much like that. Grease and bearings and stuff. All right, the next part is the part that everyone hates, which I just personally dislike myself, and that's pushing this, uh, uh, actual bearing out and then well the hard part is actually pushing it back in I'm like all right because you know once you do that there's no going back so um, that said you do need some special tools to kind of do that so obviously I didn't show you guys the snap ring pliers but snap ring pliers can get you know you can get those from like pretty much anywhere um, Menards, Home Depot, wherever you know so obviously you're gonna clean it off when it's all said and done it's really it's not really a wear item unless they're like I replaced mine at the beginning of last year, but they're usually not like a wear item. So usually if they come out and they're not too rusty and too crusty and whatever, they're usually pretty good. Um, I haven't seen any that were completely bad or rusted or broken. So you're going to need a, um, 
a wheel bearing tool service service tool kit <laughs> uh, which could be just like a bo a bolt and like you know a big washer it could be you know if you got access to like a press if you got access to a whole bunch of stuff my old shop I had access to a press obviously I'm at home right now and I don't have a press in here so I got I don't have the garage space for it so you can get yourself a nice cheap wheel bearing kit if you will I think I got this one off of eBay for like 40 bucks you can get one from home depot or we could, i think you can get one from harbor freight too for around the same price comes with a bunch of stuff in there that you're probably gonna reuse um but yeah i'll show you how to set it up and everything essentially be pushing from the back side of the hub out the front side that's the that's the trick from the back side out to the front side um that way that's the only way it's going to come out or else you'll just blow the hub apart so you're going to need something that kind of fits the back side which is this adapter right here which i actually have a race already on there i keep that well it got stuck on there and now it's just stuck on there i can get it off but stuck on there so whatever um you take that you're going to put that on the back side and you're going to push through so and you're going to have the adapter tools that are in this you're going to have like a uh Kind of like a receiving cup. It's going to go on that side right there. On the back side of that, you're going to have uh, this adapter with the bolt through it. So, once again, if you're working on the floor and you don't have a workspace or anything like that, so I'm going to try and do this whole thing like on uh, these Harbor Freight jack stands here. And the pieces of wood. I think it's kind of clever, actually. Um, all right, so you take that. Take your adapter. From the bottom side like so you're gonna take this adapter from the top side and uh you take the nut that came with the kit and screw it down on there like so Get a little bit of tension you're gonna want to make sure it's kind of straight not all kind of crooked on the bottom i mean it'll come out no matter what but it definitely makes it easier if you have the <laughs> you know Got it coming out straight. You could, I mean, even if you don't have air, you can totally do this by hand, but it's just not fun. Um, yeah. Take. All right, so basically to get this uh, hub off of here, or to get this race off, you basically take a grind off wheel. I use uh, my Harper Freight angle cutter grinder wheel. It's like 12 bucks. It's pretty big. I'll show a picture of it later on. Um, and you basically cut a little slit. Don't go too deep. If you go too deep, you're going to wind up damaging that. So just be real smooth, real easy. Grab your uh, air chisel here. You could probably use a screwdriver too. But uh, And then you stick that. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. kind of get it going like that I'm not gonna go any further because I know I'm gonna go through it so I'll just get it going a little bit and uh, yeah it'll come out and nice and smooth and easy these things are such a pain in the nose um, yeah I'm trying to get money from these videos so I can't swear but, <laughs> but um, yeah there it's really painful to do that it's it's a very big headache so once you do it a couple hundred times sometimes you get the hang of it <laughs> But I haven't been able to get the hang of it completely yet. So either way, just make sure you don't go too deep and it's all good. And once you get that off of there, then you got, here's what your hub looks like after you got the bearing out. And uh, yeah, so this is the bearing that comes out. There's your hub or your uh, knuckle, if you will. You want to clean up all that bull crap in there, a little gunk. And uh, yeah, and then you replace I'll show you too. All right, guys. Uh, once you get that all cleaned out, you know, nice and smooth, nice and clean. You're gonna go ahead and place it on there. You're gonna be taking a new bearing and pressing it in. Oh, it's nice to see this sit. All right. But you're gonna have to take a new bearing and press it in. I personally like to use uh, centric bearings. So there's the part number. A lot of people will say, you know, don't use the cheaper bearings. This is definitely not a cheaper, in my opinion. Uh, or just use straight LEM ones, the Koyo ones, or whoever ones, or NTK ones, I like NTK. Um, use whatever ones, but 
But I like to use the eccentric ones. You can get them for Rock Auto. They always have them in stock. You get them from Summit. You can get them for wherever. Um, but the thing is with these, there's this is the part number for the premium one. There's also a part number for like a $20 um, basic one. like a, But it has an E at the end of it. So keep an eye out for that. But this one basically made in Japan. Um, it has a date that it was made. It's a batch number. So if it goes bad, you can account. And you can you know hold somebody accountable if you live through the crash. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, but no, it's just, you know, it comes with a warranty and it says, you know, like OE, or it says basically made with exact OE tolerances and whatnot. Um, you can tell, like, the bearing that I pulled apart, it wasn't uh, super bad or anything, but I mean, it's ruined now. But, um, but I didn't have any play in my wheel bearing and these were in there since May. So... And I've done, you know, down to Road Atlanta, back, uh, Ohio, quite a few times. Um, done various track days. Uh, done a lot of stuff with these. So I was, you know, really happy with these bearings. So I've been testing them out. All's good with them. So you're going to have bearing. Um, kind of important for you guys with ABS. Uh, when you have ABS, you're going to put this silver shield right here. There's a rubber side and there is a silver side. So you're going to put the silver part on the inside of the wheel. I don't think it exactly matters with the style of ABS that are on these cars. I'm not exactly sure, but as you can tell, SI Integra, I don't have, you know, ABS on either one of these. I believe these just, I think there's a tone ring that they pick up off of, but I don't know. So I know that's the way you're supposed to install it, was putting this side towards the inside. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, with that said, you basically take, uh, you kind of just push it in the same reverse way of it. So, you take that, like so. I'm going to be putting that into there. I like to kind of put them in there a little, nice and smooth. There we go. Like that. Of course, I've got all my tools behind the car now. All right. And then you're going to be taking set adapter. You're gonna have the adapter, it's gonna be just about the same size as the bearing. Like, not as the inside of the bearing, because you'll just push that out the back side, but as the outer race of the bearing. So, it's gonna be almost the same size. Um, obviously, you want it to be a little smaller so it can push past the uh, actual uh, lip of that. If you don't do that, then uh, no dice. And if you push on that thing, then it's just gonna push the bearing out the back side, and you're gonna end up with a loose bearing. Even if you get it all back together, Humpty Dumpty don't always go back together, my friends. Trust me. <laughs> it seems tight in your hand. <laughs> it's not going to be tight on the car. Being honest. You take that. Or you can actually, uh... Mm, how do I want to do this? All right, and we got all that said and done back together in there. What it's gonna look like is uh, you're gonna have it in there nice and smooth and easy. It usually goes in way easier than it comes out, but um, you wanna have a little lip. That's where the snap ring rests in there. So and you'll see on the back side, it's uh, up against there, nice and flush. Very, very important. Um, so you definitely wanna have that Pretty good. So I just put the snap ring in, all good. Um, you're gonna take your, uh, which, your hub, little movie magic, movie magic. I put uh, the long studs in already. You can tell I'm getting kind of tired. St. Patrick's Day, got the green on. Um, it's just a work sweater, <laughs> like I work anymore. Anyway, so when you put this in, this is kind of important. Um, you want to support it from the back side too. Even though that hub is there, you know, it's going to be fine to, you know, it's not going to blow out the back side of the entire uh, hub here. But at the same time, this bearing right here is a floater. It's like a full floating bearing. So you want to make sure that doesn't come out of the races. So 
just like you got it out or got it uh got it out you're gonna have your same thing to get it in um on the front side here I like to have some support of this right here so this up's gonna go just like that I'm gonna straight in and just how we get it out I'm gonna have this hub right here supporting from the back side to keep it from coming out the back so obviously um, that's why this hub is on here or still stuck on here I should say so you can basically have that on the other side I feel like I say basically but I don't say actually a lot so that's good uh, you're gonna have that on the back side of there and you're gonna support it and so you keep that race from coming out of there I mean try it a different way if you want to but I can tell you how I ruined the $40 bearing <laughs> very quickly <laughs> by not paying attention just going oh yeah I got this you know so take that like so got plies over here wrapper uh This, this on here, take that, down there, like that there, and you got that nice and smooth on there. Take that. And just like that, guys, once you got it all back together, it should look something like that. Obviously, you want to clean up all this stuff, put some more grease in your uh, your ball joints, upper and lower. Remember to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, reseat your brake pads. I'll probably change my brake pads here a little bit. Um, got your studs in. And you should be all good to go. So put everything back together and uh, tighten everything down. Torque everything to your specs. I'm not going to say what torque specs are because I don't remember off the top of my head. So with that said, good luck. If you have any questions, anything about anything you might have seen in here, questions, comments, uh, you can email me. You can text me, whatever. <laughs> you guys know how to find me on the IG, on the facing book on the Facebook Messenger app, whatever. Um, I'm a pretty friendly guy, so if you hate how I did something, that's cool. If you want me to wear gloves, I guess I could do that too. People are like, oh, you should wear gloves. Your hands are going to get ruined. Eh. <laughs> um, uh, that's how you do it. So if there's any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, I want to say the bearing was about 40 bucks, like I said. It's various tools in here. Um, I tried to give the prices of those things. I mean... Did it all pretty much on the ground with some air tools. Um, nothing, anything that's really, really crazy, I understand. Um, so you need some basic sockets and, you know, some stuff. Uh, other than that, pretty uh, straightforward. Anyway, as always, guys, SK out. One.